This is our 2000 Honda Insight. We picked it up for pretty cheap. It's having a problem with the IMA light being on and a check engine light and no longer using assist. The assist mode would no longer be in use. What we have here is the IMA light is on, a check engine light, and the code that it reads is P1449. It's uh, fuel air metering auxiliary controls. And check this out. The car can still be running the key out. Not bad. The battery sets directly under all this paneling and carpet. You'll want to take every bit of this stuff out of there. And I ordered some stuff off eBay so we can recondition this battery. This is the Hitech X480. It allows you to charge four batteries at once. So the reason I got this one was that there's 20 sticks in the hybrid battery. So I figure if I charge each one of them, four sticks a day, I can knock it out in five days and get all 20 of them done. If I charge and discharge and charge and discharge, and do three cycles a day. It'll allow for a six amp charge and a two amp discharge. That's 80 watts per port. So not bad. You can charge all these different types of batteries. This thing was about 130 bucks off eBay. It does not have a power supply though. There is a model that does have a power supply, but it's like $200. So I ended up buying a power supply that I'm going to wire into this. And it was actually pretty cheap. See, it only cost 99 cents. Not really. It was like 30 bucks. So 130 and then 30, you're looking at 160 bucks. And then I bought some alligator leads to fit in here. Once the paneling's been removed, you'll see that you have a whole lot of 10 millimeter bolts. You'll have some plastic clip nuts and some trim fasteners. You'll want to take this pillar out. But first of all, the first thing you want to do is this is a 30 Torx. You'll want to take this plate off. Under this panel is a switch an on off switch. You'll want to turn this off and there's a plastic there's like a plastic cap on this that you'll slide off and then when you turn it over you'll have a piece of grass in there that you have to get out of the way and then you'll flip this around and make sure that it stays in the off position. You'll also want to take out this cargo cover Something you'll want to keep in mind is you're dealing with a lot of current here and high voltage, 144 plus volts. So having some thick rubber gloves is a necessity for this job. You'll also want to take off any rings, piercings, jewelry, chain mail, helmets, or any other accessories you might have that are metal. Because if you get shocked, that'll leave a scar. One more thing here is that you have a 8 millimeter bolt that you're going to want to take out helps hold this whole plate down and two more tricky ones right here you've got two 10 millimeters after you get this panel out of the way once the paneling's been removed you'll take these plastic star foam insulation out of here they just lift right up out of the way set them aside and your whole battery is inside of here so you'll have to take some of this brace off you'll have to take these two main power wires off this connector there's a blue connector back here and both of these two and also a couple connectors back here this connector has a tab on the back side you want to push it away away from the connector and slide it off of that tab and then that'll allow you to go ahead and release the main connector. Both of these two, 10 millimeter, take them loose. Two gray connectors. One is a three wire, one is a two wire, so you can't get them backwards. 
one big beautiful blue connector here. Move all that out of your way. On the back side of these connectors, there's a tab. You'll have to pinch down to pull them out. All of these are pretty simple. This one's a little bit difficult. The tab's a lot smaller. And you'll move this harness out of the way. And you'll notice right here, you have another 10 millimeter brace. With this brace loose and the harness out of the way, you're going to notice that it's connected right there. So what you'll have to do is kind of pull this up out of the way and take that connector loose so that you can get your brace out of there. Once you've got your connectors loose, there's a ground wire here as well. Get everything out of the way. It fits into a, a ductwork in the back there, but as you can see, the battery's loose after you take these two 12 millimeter bolts out right here. And there's a handle here, and a handle here, and then one on the other side. And that'll allow you to lift this thing up out of the car. On the forward side of this battery, after all your connectors are loose, you'll need to remove this brace actually. And there's one more 12 millimeter bolt there. And then one more in here, but there's a removable panel that you can see that bolt head down in there. And that's the last step to remove this battery. To disassemble the battery, on this side there are six Phillips head screws on the junction board. On the circuit board side there are six 10 millimeter bolts that hold this on. Three on the top, three on the bottom. There is a wire connector for the fan that must also be removed. After this panel is taken off, you will notice there are 20 10 millimeter bolts that run through each side of the battery and a PTC connector with a little screw. When all the bolts and screws have been removed, you can pry up on the PT tab. The PTC stands for positive temperature coefficient and it just reads the temperature of the battery and makes sure it doesn't get too hot. Once they've all been pried up, you'll be able to remove this junction board, giving you access to all the batteries. Be very careful not to break those tabs because they're pricey to replace. Once your 10 millimeter bolts on the top and the bottom have been removed, you'll notice that the circuit board is mostly a standalone unit. Except when it comes to these rubber tabs, when you remove them, you'll notice a 10 millimeter bolt in the back. The bolt ties the battery sticks to the circuit board and allows current to flow through. Those will need to be removed in order to get this to disassemble. After the four bolts have been removed that the rubber plugs can seal, you'll notice there is a slide pin that allows the circuit board to be connected to the housing. It must be lifted up and over, and there are also aluminum bushings that fit inside that help beef up the circuitry. These will probably fall out. Also, you have two wires that connect to your PTC. Both of those will need to be removed as well. The circuit board can be pried out over here using a small flathead screwdriver. And once it's been removed, you can just move it up out of the way. And the batteries will push right through. Like so. Before removing the sticks all the way, you'll want to make note the orientation. Every other one has a square head and a hex head, and the square head hex. If I'm not mistaken, the square head is positive and the hex head is negative. 
So this runs in series in a pattern. You might want to label these with a sharpie. One, two, three, four, and so on, or however you would like to label it. I've removed these sticks that have a temperature sensor attached to them just because I don't want to have to cut into this unless I have to, so I'm just hoping that all these sticks will still be good. So what I did is I removed those sticks first and I've got this hooked up here and a key thing that you want to do before charging these is the user manual you want to go through and do a default um, preference setup just a basic default thing. Another thing that I also did was I took a DVOM and uh, went by and checked the voltage of each one of these cells and just wrote it down just because doing complicated science and math makes you sound smart. After a little bit of messing with this, finally got the settings right, so it looks like we're charging and discharging three cycles, and when it gets hot, I'll just turn on the fan and cool them off. After setting this up and messing with it for a little bit, I finally came close to some settings that seem to work and I have it on a discharge charge cycle three times on each battery and nickel metal hydrate charge I put it on automatic you can put it on manual if you press enter and then when this flashes you press these two increase and decrease simultaneously and then you can put it on manual and it just pumps in five amps no matter what but I'm going to go with a slow charge so I just put it on automatic and it'll gradually come up to only 5 amps so less than and it usually only charges at about an amp and the discharge rate 1 amp at 6 volts because you don't want to drop below a volt per cell and there's 6 cells and what I do is I bring it back to this screen I've put in the um, the main settings when you plug this in the main settings I just put it at 6500 milliamp and you want to bring the millivoltage down to 5 millivolts and then you just start your cycle you hold this button down and it starts and it'll just pretty much discharge the batteries and then charge them back up and do that three times. I like to discharge first and then charge mainly because on the final cycle it will be charged up. Now when you put this back together I labeled these 1 through 20 and what I noticed is the ones on the outside the 18, 19, 20 and so on higher up here those sticks had higher charge and discharge rates and the ones in the middle were a lot weaker and worse so I guess it's kinda like a light bulb how a filament burns in the middle hottest so the ones that are wired in series in the middle got hottest and you know were weaker so what I did is after everything was charged up and discharged I moved the inside sticks towards the outside and the outside sticks I rotated back towards the inside now you want to make sure that the polarity still stays the same as far as you know positive negative positive negative wired in series you want to make sure that still stays the same but I rotated my sticks beforehand I had 146 volts with the whole battery hooked up afterwards I ended up with 157 volts with it all hooked up so the rate of voltage increased for the whole battery pack assembly batteries back in the car and before you initially start it there's two fuses under the hood for the IMA system you'll want to pull those out to reset your IMA light and you'll notice that the initial start you'll have a few bars on your charge meter just about three or four bars and it just trickle charges it back up everything went together pretty well you'll flip your breaker back on and just pretty much bolt it down make sure everything's working and we'll go give this a test drive okay, I this initial drive I have a full battery and I when I give it gas I get a whole lot more assist 
than I did before. And it feels a whole lot more powerful than a free banger. And when I brake, I notice that I get more charge. Everything seems to be working. Auto stop works. Starts fine. Like I said, when I need the assist, I get quite a bit more power than I had before. And it gets up to speed a lot faster than it did. And when I hit the brake, I get a recharge a whole lot longer and more of a charge than I did before. So this seems to be working pretty well. I'll keep you guys updated on this video as to how long this repair lasts. After driving 160 miles this week, I've noticed I'm still getting quite a bit more assist than I ever did before, and I maintain more of a battery than I did as well. And I've been driving it pretty hard and I'm still getting 60 miles to the gallon. So I would say this seems to be doing quite a bit better than it was before after this recondition process. And when I come to a stop, I notice it'll, it'll take much more of a charge than it did before as well.